What it is do? It's your boy Crook LGBT. What we it hit show? And today we got another reaction video. First and foremost, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe on the video. You feel me? We still on the 700 sub grind. You know what I'm saying? Today we got what happened to every player drafted above Giannis Antetokounmpo. If you guys like this content that I be doing, man, no, please, man, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on the video, man. Just, just like, comment, and subscribe on the video, bro. I will greatly appreciate it. The stuff I'm asking for isn't. It, it, it doesn't cost anything, and it doesn't take too much out of your time, man. Just take literally, like, two seconds. Maybe 2.5 seconds out your day to go and like the video. Comment something. You feel me? Sound like, help your brother out. You feel me? But let's get right into it, though. Giannis Antetokounmpo, he's now a superstar, but on draft night, Giannis wasn't always viewed in that manner. You see, in the 2013 draft, Giannis was taken with the 15th pick by, of course, the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, if you don't know, for a player of that caliber, that's extremely low. And it made me wonder, who is every player that was drafted above the Greek Freak? Oh, with the first... And the first... And this is by Dom. So, shout out to Dom's, man. You know what I'm saying? What the video? Pick in the 2013 NBA draft. Y'all remember Anthony Bennett, the bro? The Cleveland Cavaliers select Anthony Bennett. So a lot of you That's are familiar crazy. with the name Anthony Bennett for being the biggest bust in NBA history. But in college, you know, this guy was tough. You know, he averaged 16 points per game as a true freshman. In college, he played well, but nobody, and I mean nobody, viewed him as the most talented prospect in the draft class. Well, nobody except the Cleveland Cavaliers. When he stepped on the court, he surprised everyone, and I'm talking about in a bad way. It took him five games to record his first NBA field goal, and man, that, that has to be a skill. Like, I've seen guys scoring the NBA off cuts and just being at the right place at the right time. He would only average four points in his rookie season, and man, that's... that's I think another thing is that the expectations got to him. You know, he was an underrated prospect. You know, he wasn't really a hyped up prospect until Cleveland drafted him number one. After his rookie season, Cleveland, they saw enough. They wanted no parts of Anthony Bennett, so they traded him. They traded him to the Timberwolves only 57 games into the season. That. They completely cut bait with him. They released him. That. From there, right. Anthony Bennett would play in Toronto, Brooklyn, Houston, and he would spend some time in the G League. If you're looking for Anthony Bennett today, you can find him playing professional basketball overseas. overseas. Mm. With the second yeah, pick crazy, in the 2013 And that NBA. just goes to show you like how hard it is to draft these players, bro. Like Well, I don't mean draft these players, but like draft yeah, well, whoa, well, whoa, well, yeah. Drafting players and then develop developing them into what they are today. Like a lot of these rookies, bro, it takes time, bro. That's why I will never completely like discredit a rookie. If he doesn't produce in his first season, it's his first season, bro. Generally, generally, it takes it's going to take players at least two to three years to actually get like their feet under them, a sense of what's going on, and then just them just taking time out. You feel, you feel what I'm saying to work on that game in the off season. You really can tell who really works on that game in the off season and who just does it just to do it. Without any meaning to, to what well it, without any addition to their game, bro. You feel me? You can tell, but you gotta give some of these players time. But when you give them time and they don't develop, it's a business at the end of the day, bro. They gonna cut bait with you easily. Draft easily. The Orlando NBA Magic is a business, bro. You gotta remember that. Victor Oladipo played college ball at Indiana University, and yeah, he was, was a tough. freak athlete. He averaged 14 points. I ain't gonna lie, Victor Oladipo was tough, bro. The Orlando him Magic. coming out of Indiana, what? Actually got off to I ain't gonna lie, I used to love watching start. him play in his Indiana, first four bro. years in the league. Love it. He was averaging about 16 points per game. He, was he tough. played well in Orlando, but his career would really take off after being traded to the Pacers. And I'm not gonna do too much talking. Just sit back, kick back, and relax. His cousins has left. He has two fouls. That's why he's out. As Oladipo went right around Cunningham. Finds Turner. Pounds it. 
point is, Victor Oladipo, at least for that 2017 season, he was really good. He made it to the All-Star game, he averaged 23 points per game, and he went toe-to-toe -to -toe against LeBron in the playoffs. But since this season, Victor hasn't been the same player. And that's injuries, mainly because bro. of injuries, you know? I think he's still capable of being really good, but he just hasn't been able to stay healthy, which is just unfortunate. This past season, Victor would play for the Miami Heat, and in the games that he was active for, he was actually playing solid. But once again, Victor would suffer another season-ending injury. Season injuries, bro. You gotta and take the, care of yourself, man. Even though some stuff you can't control, NBA you gotta do your best to, to, to control Wizards everything you can control, select bro. Otto Porter Jr. As a sophomore in college, Otto averaged 16 points per game, and he was awarded with the Big East Player of the Year. Otto Porter Jr. was known as the most complete prospect in the draft class. You know, he was extremely versatile, and I think that's what made him so intriguing. He was then drafted third by the Wizards, and this selection had a lot to do with fit. He was joining a solid Washington team. You know, they were competitive. And what more can you ask for coming into the league? Otto Porter would last five seasons in Washington before being traded to the Chicago Bulls. After one season in Chicago, he was again traded, this time to the Orlando Magic. Otto Porter Jr. Oh, is he's far from being a star in the league, but he is a he's a respectable role player. He's a great three and D player. He shoots the ball well. He defends, and for his he got a ring now though. He averages about ten points per game, so he got he a is ring. Giving you solid production. So far, he's the only player Charlotte that got a ring. Select Cody Zeller. Cody would attend Indiana University and he would average about 16 points per game and he would grab seven rebounds to go along with that. Even though he oh put God, up the numbers, hot. the Yo, thing that made him like, a legit top hot, five bro. draft pick was his basketball IQ. He didn't exactly live up to the expectations and standards for a player selected that high, but he, he is still solid. You know, again, he's a role player. He is very injury prone, but when he is active and healthy, he averages about nine points per game. So Cody Cody is one of the players on this list minutes. that still He probably just got to go to a contender team, bro. Him. Like With a Lakers or like a Boston. Select Alex Len. Yeah, that was a failed experiment. As a sophomore at Maryland, he would come back to school and he would improve in just about failed every experiment. statistical category. He doubled he his scoring output us. and he, he really impressed scouts with his soft touch footwork and defensive instincts. Entering the league, he would be selected to a, a Phoenix team that was rebuilding, and his career didn't take off like most expected it to. He played four seasons in Phoenix, averaging about seven points and seven rebounds. After signing with Atlanta in 2018, Alex, he would put together his best season. He was averaging 11 points and six rebounds, which is the most he ever averaged throughout a season. So something was clicking for him in Atlanta, but unfortunately, his time in Atlanta wouldn't last long. Since then, he's played in Sacramento, Toronto. In this past season, he played with the Washington Wizards. With the sixth pick, the so New Orleans far, Pelicans select the only one that got a ring. Leaving college, he was he was projected to be the number one pick in the 2013 draft, but he just could not stay healthy. You know, late in the season, he would suffer a torn ACL, which was probably I the worst that. thing that could happen to him. And there was Once a lot of people that was questioning, like, should that's he be drafted from an injury, high? Especially not an injury that's severe to the point where it requires surgeries. So that's why he would end up falling in the draft. All right, so when he got to Philly, you know, it was a, the best way to describe the situation was literally like a, a roller coaster ride. You know, his first two years were respectable, but I think the biggest problem is that he was just defensive minded. Like he had no offensive skill set. And that's a, that's a problem with the way the NBA was shifting because everybody has to be a threat on the offense. Rudy Gobert, 200 plus million. I rest my case event you know Philly went out and they basically drafted his replacement in back to back years you can't First say you can't make money off of just defense and they Rudy Gobert is literally all defense, defense so, no so offense, as bro. you can imagine that meant that he would be getting less play time and he wasn't too happy about that I'm not, I'm not an eight minute player so I don't know what, what that's about so I don't care where I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't really care I need to be on the court playing basketball I think I'm too good to be playing eight minutes like no that's crazy that's crazy that's crazy. 
in 2017, yeah. Philly, they, they had enough of him. So they would trade him to the Dallas Mavericks. And since he's played with the OKC Thunder and most recently the New York Knicks, he plays about 20 minutes per game and he averages about five points, seven rebounds and about two blocks. He a hustle guy. With the seventh pick. So far, only one person that got a ring. Select Ben McLemore. Ben McLemore was a baller at the University of Kansas. He was explosive, athletic, and he could score the ball at an efficient rate. Leaving Kansas, he was regarded as the most talented prospect in the draft class, even drawing comparisons to Ray Allen. Come draft night, he was selected by Sacramento, and he didn't exactly live up to the hype. He spent the first half of his career suffering on a Sacramento team that just wasn't very good. In 2019, he was released by Sacramento, but would later sign a deal. But what's crazy to me, though, is that how can you be a franchise and suck for that long, bro? How? How do you suck for that long, bro? It's where he would prove Sacramento he ain't been the relevant since DeMarcus Cousins, This past bro. season, he played for the Los Before DeMarcus Cousins, Cousins Chris Webber, like, like about eight damn. Points per game, and he shot about 37% from three. With the eighth pick in the 2013 NBA Johnson, draft, right? the Detroit Pistons select Kentavious oh, wow. Caldwell Pope. Casey oh, well, Pope got it right. University of Georgia, and he was a marksman from three, averaging about 19 points as a sophomore. Later that year, KCP was drafted by the Detroit Pistons. He would spend four seasons with the Pistons before signing with the Lakers as a free agent. KCP has had both ups and downs, but overall, he's a somewhat solid 3 and D player. No, nah, he's solid, bro. I, I, I would want to catch Caldwell Pope on my team, bro. Ninth pick, I would want him on my team. Timberwolves select Trey Burke. Trey Burke didn't really was a stud at the either. University of Michigan. As a sophomore, he put up about 19 yeah, points, tough. seven assists. Trey Burke was tough to coming out of the national championship game. Entering the tough, league, bro. we all thought Trey had star potential, and so did the Utah Jazz. They traded away two first-round draft picks to select a guy that they believed would be a transcendent talent. I think we found out fairly quickly that he wouldn't be in Utah for long. Trey Burke would last three years in Utah before being traded to the Washington Wizards for a second round draft pick, which is crazy I think he's because with Dallas they traded though, right? two first rounders to select him. Since the trade, he's played for numerous teams operating as a spark plug off the bench. This past season, he played for the yeah, Dallas Mavericks down. and he averaged about seven points per game. I remember that. Tenth pick in the 2013 NBA draft, the Portland Trailblazers select CJ McCollum from CJ McCollum attended a small school, Lehigh University. He was a high-scoring combo guard that averaged 21 points Ooh. throughout his collegiate Ooh. career. Following Ooh. his senior season, Ooh. he was Ooh. drafted to Portland, and he's turned oh, himself into butter. a respectable name. In the last six years, Stay he's down. averaged at least 20 points per game. He's a respectable talent. He's just not Giannis. With the 11th pick, the Philadelphia 76ers select Michael Carter. That's crazy. He had that Michael one good Carter rookie year, and you ain't had nothing from him, At the bro. University of Syracuse, and you his potential was on full display. In his improved sophomore season, he averaged about 12 points and 7 assists. Now, the thing that made him an intriguing prospect was you his ain't size. You nothing from he him, bro. He was a 6'6 point guard. He was a great playmaker, and he just had he just had great feel for the game that you, you don't see often from a collegiate athlete and that's why the Philadelphia 76ers drafted him so in MCW's rookie season he took off like he came out of nowhere averaging 17 points per game and he was awarded with the rookie of the year trophy and then as the, that, part is, the, the organization they never believed in him they never viewed him as a franchise talent so the next season he was traded to Milwaukee to play alongside Giannis from there, his career went downhill. He suffered multiple injuries, he lost confidence, and ultimately he failed to adapt to the modern style of basketball, meaning he's never been the best shooter. As for today, he's currently playing for the Orlando Magic and he's been a solid role player. Mm, that's crazy. With the 12th yeah, pick, bro. the Oklahoma City Thunder select 
Stephen Adams. Stephen Adams. Adams attended the University of Pittsburgh. He didn't exactly put up the most appealing numbers, but you could definitely see the potential. When he got to OKC, he was a bit of a project. However, he would eventually develop into a reliable center, and it definitely helped that his point guard was Mr. Triple Double himself. Aquaman is athletic. He's a great rebounder, and he's extremely physical. In the 2017 season, Stephen would put together his best outing. He would average 13 points and 9 rebounds, which Euros? would land him a massive four-year, $100 million contract. As for today, he plays for the New Orleans Pelicans, and this past season, he averaged about 8 points and 9 rebounds. I would still keep, I would still keep Stephen Adams on my team. 13 pick, the Dallas Mavericks select Kelly Olynyk. Kelly Olynyk attended Gonzaga University in his junior season. On average, he put up about 18 points and 7 rebounds. On top of that, his maturity was on full display. Entering the league, Kelly wasn't thought of as his prospect that had high upside or even star potential. He was more so viewed as a prospect that can come in and, and give you quality minutes at the center position. That's pretty much what he did when he got to Boston. Since entering the league, Kelly has been consistent. You know exactly what you're going to get from him on a nightly basis. Yeah. He's been in the league for eight years now, and he's played for multiple teams, including the Celtics, Heat, and recently the Rockets. This past season, he did average 19 points per game, but for his career, he averages about 10 points along with five rebounds. Bro, it's, it, it's just with a pad, the 14th bro. pick in the 2013 NBA Draft, the Utah People's Jazz stories is different. Select Shabazz Muhammad. Shabazz Muhammad attended UCLA. He was referred to as a pure scorer. As a freshman, he averaged 18 points per game, which shows that at least on the collegiate Shabazz level, he Muhammad. could put the ball through the basket. On draft night, he was traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves, and in his rookie season, he did not play immediately. But by his second year, which was the 2014 season, he began to play significant minutes. He would score about 14 points per game, which was the most he ever averaged throughout his entire career if you were to glance at his numbers you'd probably think he was a respectable player but that was not exactly the case if Shabazz Muhammad wasn't scoring the basketball he served you little value he wasn't the best defender he wasn't the best rebounder and he definitely wasn't the best passer he was one of the guys I've seen that can score 20 and have little impact on winning Shabazz yeah. Muhammad last played professional basketball in 2019. He played in the Chinese Basketball League. And then he came. With the 15th pick in the 2013 NBA Draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Giannis Adetokounmpo. Adetokounmpo. Damn, let me ask you this. As far as the recession, we have a... Oh, I don't want to watch that. But I love you guys. I appreciate you guys for watching, for tuning in. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe with a video. I am out. Peace.